remember that. Remember that when they use lies to manipulate, to make you all fearful. When in reality, we are on the side of truth, of justice, of dignity, of liberation, of freedom. We are on the side of love and life. How the hell is it controversial in 2023 to say that the murder, the genocide of over 25,000 people, 10,000 children is not okay and the entity that committed it needs to be dismantled. Forgive me for a half a minute, I want to add to what Nadine just said. This past Sunday, I met the foreign minister of Iran, and he said to us, amongst other wise words, that he met recently four leaders of Palestinian factions, and they all expressed to him that they don't have anything against Jews, but against the Zionist occupation of Palestine. Thank you. I have never seen a struggle or a movement so preoccupied with having to consistently clarify that we don't have anything against the religion. It's against the people that's killing us, as if that isn't obvious. But the media, the lies, the laws that they pass, the universities being forced to act ask answer questions like this and denounce students who call for intifada who call for liberation forces us to clarify this time and time again when in reality we should be focusing on the fact that palestinian families are carrying their family members in pieces in plastic bags because the bombs being dropped on their houses meant to ethnically cleanse and annihilate them are being set and paid for by the united states of america So keep that in mind, keep that in mind when people continuously try to obfuscate what's going on by saying we need to denounce anti-Semitism, we need to focus on that instead of the fact that tens of thousands of people are literally being erased. Over a thousand family trees in Gaza have been completely wiped out and destroyed. We know that this is something people are going to look back on and say that they condemned, pretended that they were not okay with it. But where is everybody? Where is everybody who claims that they don't stand for the murder of 10,000 Palestinian children? How can we have holidays? How can we have celebrations? How can there be new beginnings in a new year when Palestine is still under occupation? We know that people have stood with the Palestinian liberation struggle for as long as there have been col col colonizers on our land, for as long as there has been an occupation. People of all different backgrounds, artists, healthcare workers, from all different walks of life. And I'm just looking for our next speaker to let them know to come up, but Immortal Technique is here to say a few words on Palestine. So I'll just let you introduce yourself and, and you've done this before. You always come to our actions. We know that people of all different walks of life, of all different backgrounds, of all different, you know, work experiences, like I said, artists have stood with the Palestinian liberation struggle, and we are honored to stand with them as well. It has been said many times that you don't have to be Palestinian to stand with the Palestinian people. You just have to be a human being, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna tell you the truth, in my life, 
I've seen a lot of good things and I've seen a lot of horrible bad things. I've seen a lot of people die. It affected me badly as a kid. I never talked about it, but I, sometimes you see somebody dead of an overdose or you see somebody shot and killed. But never in my life have I seen so many dead children accompanied with the amount of excuses for why they're dead and why they deserve to be dead. And ladies and gentlemen, I know that every single person here is disgusted with the excuses that we've heard for genocide, not just since October when they decided all of this began, but no, for 75 years of an occupation, this has been going on, ladies and gentlemen. I also want to reiterate some of the things that other people said on stage, but it's important for us to acknowledge that Israel takes orders from the United States, right. that it's resupplied by the United States, that it, it doesn't do anything without the say-so and the get-go of the United States. So when the United States says it doesn't want a regional war and Israel wants a regional war, just remember the words of the Godfather when he sat there and he said, no, Tatalia was a pimp. He could have never outfought Santino. I should have known the whole time it was Barzini. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, why? Because the United States pulls the strings. Because Genocide Joe has got to go, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the problem. Who do we turn to? We turn to ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, because we know that Trump is a Zionist as well. So when we have a choice between a terrible person like Trump and a terrible corrupt person like Biden, the only person that we have is us, ladies and gentlemen, you and me. There's so many people here that are more than qualified and better qualified than me to speak about the history of Palestine. But one interesting thing that I will tell you is there's a reason that we haven't attacked Yemen. There's a reason that the United States has not attacked Yemen yet. And the reason, unfortunately, is, is not a good one. It's because simply because they're a poor country and they're famine stricken, the, the, the entire nation is overloaded with weapons that are left over from that brutal war that this country was sponsoring. Let's not forget that. It wasn't the Americans that ended the war. They could have ended the war at any time, saved the lives of a million children that died of famine. And I'm, I'm not here to, 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 to promote the Chinese government, but it was China that put the Saudis and the Iranians in the same room and said, we have to end this. So there are so many surface to air missiles. It's not just guns that they have left in Yemen. The reality is the United States is scared to lose pilots. It's scared to lose people over Yemen. It's scared to create a, 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 a situation that it's not sure it can win. It wants a regional war where it thinks it can win because the reality is that we're playing a game of chess with the other superpowers and the people of Palestine are made to suffer as a cause because of it. And we know exactly how that feels in Latin America. So we stand in solidarity with the people of Palestine because we're tired. We're tired of being used like political pawns in someone else's game, ladies and gentlemen. Those thousands of dead children that are in Gaza were killed with no remorse. And we have to remember that when the IDF raided Gaza, they did so with the help of American mercenaries, people who were veterans of the Iraq and Afghanistan war. Why? Why, you ask, did they do this? Isn't the IDF undefeatable? Isn't it a great army? No, not really. Maybe in the 60s and 70s when they were constantly fighting wars, but they were taken off conventional duty about 15, 20 years ago. So for the past 20 years, all they've been doing is breaking the arms of little children in the West Bank and torturing innocent people. They haven't actually fought a war. You know what the Ukraine looks like? If Russia was given the airspace, it would be over tomorrow. But the reality is that without those planes, they would slug it out on the ground, and that's not what the United States wants. And unfortunately, we're stuck in this horrible position where we have to see people die day after day after day after day. And then we realize that the United States doesn't, ha doesn't have allies with Israel. It's allied with other Muslim nations that these individuals have spoke about, other Middle Eastern countries that it has bought and paid for. And that's because we have to pay attention. During the Arab Spring, the United States took that time to install a military dictatorship in Egypt. 
It took the time to present Barack Obama as if he was a progressive, and yet he continued the Bush doctrine of knocking over countries that threatened our hegemony in the region. So I say to you today, ladies and gentlemen, we won't be lied to anymore, we won't be manipulated anymore, and we will not ever forget about our brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Sudan, in Congo, but today we stand with the people of Gaza. We love you. Thank you very much for being here, and I love all of you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. From the 